Awe, welcome to yet another exciting edition of Playing the Bounce with me, Dalen Oliver. We are in for a treat today. This individual has two master's degrees. Let's make it three because he is the master of the DHL Stormers, Vodacom United Rugby Championship winning coach. Your hands and mine for John Dobson. Yes, please. I feel like for the whole of Cape Town and the Western Cape and all the DHL Stormers fans, like, I want to hug you. Like, <laughs> <laughs> we won the Vodacom United Rugby Check. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> We've all been wanting to do this because it's been such such a magical um, couple of years, man. Double, good to see you. Thanks so much for your time. Appreciate it big time. Uh, two bald men in the sun. I hope you're sunblocked up. Are you? No, I'm going to. Good. Okay. The screen point behavior. <laughs> <laughs> Look, listen here. DHL Stadium, 55,000 yeah. people. There's millions who love you guys. This is this is pressure. This is pressure just because when you see the stands, you you know there's expectations. Yeah, I think um, what's lovely about the men's and what our reconnection with the people of Cape Town is, yeah. is people love us. So yeah. the energy we get, you know, there's pressure, of course. You don't want to say, let's send them home disappointed. Yeah. But cheapers, they make it, they make it. We saw in the final, the semi final, what a difference yeah. they make. And Al, it's, hear that noise. You know, I was one of the first guys to say, gee, I can't leave Newlands. You know, the tradition, the crowd are right yes. on top of you. Yes. But this has actually been a really pleasant surprise for us. So. And it's, it's you, call, you call them the faithful, they, they, yeah. they've been there from the start. What I loved is um, in the initial stages, in the early stages, before we even started Vodacom United Rugby Championship, we had the team singing, the crossing. Yeah, that's the right. The late legend Johnny Clegg. Run us through that because that, that was very crucial in terms of team culture, just opening it up to, to the mother city and creating access points. Yeah, well, I think we had that season we introduced our slogan, which I think we got right this last season. That season that we did the crossing with Jamie Roberts, who can yeah. actually sing really well, uh, was um, was to get Cape Town smiling. We yeah. felt the team had got diff quite a distance from the team. And I felt like we were a bit like a professional team, like anywhere else in the world. It's a, it exists in a bubble, you know yeah. what I mean? And not just for our performance, but the right thing to do, uh, because the, the faithful have changed so much over yes. the years, haven't they? Yeah. I mean, in the 80s, the faithful look a lot different to this amazing faithful we got now, who are from every walk yeah. of life, you know, and there's just so many powerful stories I've got about that. So we wanted to reconnect. And also in the team, you know, we can have diversity. And diversity almost to me is like a photograph. It, there's a person of color, there's an Indian church, there's a Muslim, there's yeah. a black person, there's a white person. That looks diverse. Yes. But diversity is about inclusion. Mm. That's the real diversity, when they feel included. And I think to sing a Zulu song that talks about that transition and all that uh, was very powerful. And so it was just trying to accelerate. I didn't want, because I think I'll be honest, sometimes in South African rugby, you've got the core of the old rugby order. And then obviously a sort of transformed element around mm. it. And I wanted something a bit deeper than that yeah. where it's not necessarily the one culture is the bedrock and the rest guys yes. must fit in. You know, so I just saw that. And it was also great fun to do it. I was going to say, yeah. watching it, the social video was amazing. No, who who are great. the guys who actually have some singing capabilities? Who are the karaoke on tour? <laughs> Look, I thought Sia, Sia, Sia sang well. I'm trying to think of Scat Hopeless. Yes. Uh, kind of hopeless. <laughs> yourself, yourself? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I tell you, it was a great surprise. Another you know, was Mark Lottering, because you know, you know yes, from your industry. Yes, yes. Yeah, they, they were such. I think the players learned a lot from the musicians because our players, we get the fifty-five thousand, we get the adulation, we get a lot. You know, you could be the best trombone player in South Africa. I walk through the Cape Town International, nobody knows who you are. Yeah. The second team Stormers, second scrum, scrum off of the Stormers. Everybody's like, you don't yeah. pay for your meal at the Mug and Bean, you know. Yes. So to see those musicians, how masters of their craft and how humble they yeah. were, it was very special. Though. Just from from your side as a coach. Um, Team culture, is this one of the things you're trying to set up set up prior to even hitting the field, just to, to make sure everyone is, is comfy and we're friends and we're talking to each other? You've nailed it. I mean, that, look, that's probably what I obsess about. I don't think I'm the world's best coach or technical coach, but I think I could get a team. Yeah, what, what, what's clear to me, and I think with, with, you know, rugby's going in a, it's a team sport. It's yeah. the ultimate team sport. It's better than cricket where you can be a real self-centered prick and yeah. you score 300 runs every week and still yeah. get chosen rugby's not quite the same so what i realized during the sort of via the pandemic was i sort of learned a bit that it, we talk about the team the team is motivated the team plays yeah. for cape town but it's actually all individuals with all backstories yes and so it's we're actually managing individuals it's not a team sport and, and what i mean i've got to know llewellyn zuss's backstory is that his dad was yeah. a security guard from villiers who died of COVID. Uh, a completely different backstory to Achiever, a really completely backstory to Scarra, yeah. to understand their backstories and then to make them feel included. Because, you know, if, if I think if I go to work 
you know, I see one of the things we always think we're great coaches, you know, what another guy off the field or what's like, what's, uh, how did you sleep or how things with your girlfriend or yeah. how things at home or sorry about your dad or all of whatever the story is. But actually what defines their happiness is the experience at work. Yes. You know what I mean? That's when you sleep better. That's yeah. when you're, you're spending a whole day there. Oh, exactly. Yeah. So I thought, you know, if we create an environment where, if I go to work anxious, I don't know where I stand, do I fit in? When I'm anxious, I've got bad sort of uh, adrenaline going through me. I don't communicate so well. Yeah. I'm not, in, you know what I mean? I'm nervous. Um, I shut down. I'm defensive. Yeah. If you go to work and you feel like you feel part of it and you so, and you, and guy and you've got a sense of belonging, A, to our cause, and secondly, the guys around you make you feel included, then you communicate your joys, you bring energy. Mm. So if we're going to bring energy, why wouldn't we not do it? You know, guys feel, so that's something I probably obsess about. Yeah. It's a uh, good but, thing because you can uh, see it's friends. Yeah. It's friends on and, and off the field. Yeah. And, and it's a magical thing that we can witness as, as the fans because okay. you know when you see camaraderie, without speaking about it. Yeah. That's the magic that's, that's yeah. being shown. So, so let's shift the pace. So we've got team culture. How do we shift that into a space where you're on the forefront of coaching in the world? I mean, we've won Vodacom United Rugby Championship. To stay in that space and make sure that you're always progressive, you've got a great coaching staff. How, yeah, are, you, well, think, how, are, you, how are you always having finger on the pulse? Yeah, uh, look, I think what, uh, what you raised a very good point there about the staff. Um, you know, like the head coach, I feel a bit uncomfortable. Look, we take a lot of the, when things go bad, with the yeah. guy, Dobson must go. Yes. And I've seen that Dobson, you know, not kind of hits that. <laughs> he used to walk up, walk up to the coach's box and you know, yes. I've just seen you know, uh, <laughs> but, 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 <laughs> but I think we also get a lot of credit. Uh, you know, Dobson's turned the stormers around. But yeah. cheap is the staff I've got. Amazing. And I'm not just saying it because it's public. Darby Snayman, yeah. Labib Levy, Rita Shlongwani, Norman. These guys, and we've got high levels of trust. So yes. I never have to worry. I can coach for. I never have to worry. That wants his job, or what's, or what's uh, Darby saying to Kate Volleter? Maybe it's not. Yes. Really, so we, so they, the brains they, trust is it, close, and they do a lot of technical research to keep us on the cutting edge. The other thing is, every says there's a target on our backs this year. So that's been a thing. We want to say, and with the hunted, we try to be the hunters. So we. We said you know, last year that we wouldn't want to, yeah, we wanted, we had to hit the summit, you know, yeah. by winning URC, we're on the top yes. of Everest. But we don't, there's a, most of the people on Everest that get the summit die on the way down. Yes. You know? So we always say, don't die at the summit. We want to get better and better and better. We want to build this people of Cape Town and the culture. And you said that you talked before we came on, the, ca the, 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 the talent we have should be a dynasty. You know, we have to be at the top table of world club or provincial yeah. rugby. So, that's why we want to get better. We and it shows we're breeding spring rocks as well, man. Yeah. We we're breeding yeah. it through and through. Yeah. And, and, and what's exciting about this for, for us as, as fans and, and, and rugby lovers, we're going to, to Europe now, right? Yeah. We're in there for the second season. We've got the Heineken Cup, we've got the Vodacom URC. But before we get into that, as you're prepping for the first URC, where's your mind at? Because it's, it's unknown territory. So you know, you took it last, last year, year yeah. yeah. So run us through that, that first stages before you head into the season where they go, it's no more Southern Hemisphere, we're going to the North. It's yeah. all first assignments, yeah. new conditions, new yeah. technical spaces, yeah. weather, yeah. Um, officials, yeah. rules, language barriers. Yeah. It's cold there, we warm here, <laughs> we hot, you know? I think it probably was akin to, look, you're probably too young to remember, but when South Africa went back into international sport in, yes. nine, in the early 90s, you know, the Springboks got, we're, no, we're so, we thought we were pillar, you know, yes. we're at the top of the... We really struggled, I think. Uh, the match officials, massive issue. The conditions, massive issue. We had Western Province, or the Storm was another issue. We just went into administration. Yes. And there was doubt about up to a couple of weeks before we started the tournament if we were even going to take part or yes. that going to be replaced by the cheaters. Um, and we went to go and play our first game in Treviso. And that, luckily, it was a soft landing in terms of the weather. It was, yeah. Yeah, it was a bit warmer and that thing. I remember saying to Darby Snayman in the coach's box, and I think we were up, I can't remember, 12 3 or something. I said, we're not getting up. Because <laughs> you know, the Bulls have been there a few months yes, before. Yes. And uh, we actually you alive. Happened, we, yeah. can, we, we can play. And I think uh, we just got, and then we went to Munster. We lost, but we, uh, the Munster were a world class team. Yeah. And, we, and we were up 21 3 at one stage. So we, but it did take a lot of, you know, j just how to get to the grounds, the culture, everything was different. But I think we got a much better view now. Listen, we gave it well back to them when they came in February yes. and March. Uh, it was beautiful. Yeah. It was delicious. 35 degrees. I love that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You're feeling it. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome. This is the yeah, moment. Line, we, we used that line from Blood Diamond. You know, this yeah. is Africa. Yes. TIA. You're going to feel <laughs> it. It's too hot. They go melting. I love that because yeah. I'm sure when we were over there, you're like, wait till you come. Yeah, oh, yes. Wait till you come. And, and in terms of, of 
technicality in terms of technical rugby, I mean, more physical in, yeah. in South Africa, just going that side, um, adapting to their game. What, what, what was that like, especially with the planning? Yeah, we had, um, we still, I think we've you know, got a meeting, we've still got some issues we need to sort out. South African mindset is everything's a contest, you know, because yes. we didn't say we're physical. Yeah, we want to beat you everywhere. We want to get you in the scrum, we want to get you in the breakdown, we want to get you in the mall. Anywhere there's contact, we want to win it. And their mindset was quite different. Uh, and that's where we struggled with the officiating and the teams. Like a Leinster, or oh, those top Irish teams want to play multi-phase rugby. So yes. they, they don't contest the breakdown too much. They just want to get through their phases. Uh, scrum is almost like a restart, you know what I mean? Yeah. And we've come, we, we spend most of our salary on kits off of my Herbert, you know? And the, then suddenly we felt we couldn't scrum. The referee would just yeah. say, use it before we could get yes. the diesels going. That's when we were sweating at yeah. the TV. <laughs> <laughs> at the ref. <laughs> and uh, and the, so, so that's been, we're trying to say, listen, we want to contest. You know, yeah. The aerial, we, we, we play great rugby, make no mistake, but the South African DNA is to contest. And they were, so I think they were much more about continuity. Yes. Uh, even though they don't play, I don't think the URC is, attract, is the most attractive, but they do get through multi-phase rugby. And I think that's an area where we, had to have a sit down with the referee, sit down with Tapa Henning and, and say, Tapa, please give us a chance to scrum, you know what I mean? Yes. Give us a chance to maul and all that sort of stuff. And I think we're getting somewhere, but it is a very, very different style. Listen, we got to go, to, we went to Connett in February, I think it was February. The rain it didn't touch the ground, the rain. It was, the wind was so strong, the rain was just going like this. moving. Yeah, yeah, we were gone. Different spaces, <laughs> yeah. eh? Completely. Different spaces. So we, I think we need to, as we, especially go, as you said, go into the Heineken Cup now, we're going to have to have a slightly a hard court game, which is at the Stormers' DNA. We also going to have that sort of softer court, you know, put it up in the air just to, for some yeah. Just for January, just really for December, January, February. Yeah. But I love that you mentioned that because you spoke about the summit. And as you want to stay at the summit, you're going, how do we change 100% to right. make sure yeah. that we dominate you in all spaces yeah. all around the globe? And, and, and in terms of working with this generation, it's a newer generation. It's a yeah. generation that's exposed to much more. It's a generation that has access to social media all the time. It's a generation that wants to talk, but may, maybe a bit more emotionally in touch with, um, with themselves compared to previous years. How are you dealing with that from a coaching perspective and just managing the youngsters and the experience to get yeah. that ultimate end look, product? I think, I think with rugby players, look, Generation Z or, or whatever, yeah, we were told, I got some guy in uh, from Stellenbosch University, he said your maximum meeting can be 14 minutes, you know. Yeah. I remember sitting in school in double Latin, which is 18 minutes of Latin without starting, uh, without, without a break, I mean. So too much Latin, <laughs> way too much Latin. Latin. Which doesn't really have helped me much in life now, but the, it's a transfer of knowledge skills a lot different, you know, um, the length of meetings, how we say, I can't say Dalian Yacht was useless yes. when we get on. Yeah. I gotta say, that was okay, how, how do you think we could do it differently? Yes. You know, so, but I think with rugby players, we're quite lucky because by nature, they're quite disciplined. Tough you know, boys. Tough boys, disciplined boys. And generally nice guys, you know. Yes. Uh, um, so you're not, you're not talking about the crazy youth with uh, um, multiple devices. Well, I, there's a challenge that I have to work on is if I'm sitting on the team bus, you know, and I'm sitting next to you, I'd, ra I'd rather I'd rather get a WhatsApp from Andrew from from the uh, yeah. Is, I'll be three rows in front. Yes. Then actually talk to you. That's a culture. That's something we have to work on. Yeah. If I get the groom the team tight, I can get them off their phones. Yeah. You know, I don't want to say listen, no phones but I want to create an environment where they're talking to each other, you know. When we switched on, we switched it's on. Because exactly. you're building relationships like yeah. that. That's, that's, that's important. We, can't we, ha and we have to be a relational environment, not yeah. a transactional. What I can, it's not about what I, I can get this, con I'll play like this and I get this contract. No, it has to be relationship based because then yeah. you get trust and honesty and energy. And I mean, rugby's 12 months of the year now. We take um, Vodacom, URC, we've got Heineken Cup, we've got our local competitions, we've got international yeah. duty, etc. You're not sleeping. You're traveling all the time, you're jet lagged all the time. How are you balancing all of this to make sure that players are in a good space on and off the field and yourself as a coach? I'm worried about it. Yeah. Um, you know, because I think what's going to have to happen, we're going to have to get for their, and I don't mean player welfare just as, as a thing that we, a comment that we throw away. You know, I think it's all in South Africa, for all our DNAs in South Africa, the whole country, whether you, no matter if you're Christian or not, yeah. the 16th of December till the 3rd or 4th of January. Switched off. Switch off you. It's, Still by yeah. Strandfontein, yeah. doesn't matter where you it's are. It's December, it's a December. lifestyle. <laughs> <laughs> you used to be in Cork Bay Harbour. Yes, exactly, 100%, <laughs> yeah. that's what it is. And now to make these guys play at this time and train, I think we don't have it a weekend off over this time of year up until middle of February. It's a lot. Yeah, so I'm going to have to give, you know, whether that's in terms of player rotation to yeah. say, 
to example, France, Mahoba, go and reduce the Kudu population yes. over New Year. You might not play against the Lions and take run a risk of losing. And also, I'm going to have to taper down on some training just to be decent, to say, listen, there's no ways. I know the max match week should yeah. have us training on Boxing Day because yeah. it's a Tuesday or whatever it is before the game. That's just not going to be right to train. Yeah. So there's a risk under my, but hopefully in the long run. But I do think we are at a, we're, the sooner the seasons can get aligned, even if we do, if we do move to an out-and-out -out summer sport, yeah. but the moment where you've got... Like if you think about the the Springboks now, they'll finish the URC or, yeah. or Heine, God willing, the Heineken Cup in May. June they'll play some warm-ups for the Springboks into That's the World Cup, straight back because we pay them. We, yeah. I think at Western Province we're trying to do is give them a bit more rest. So every time the Springboks give us a resting protocol, I try and exceed it by a week. I love Just, that. Yeah. I love that too. This is so weird. Uh, yeah, I'm aware of it, but it's it's nerve-wracking up there. Yeah. yeah. What I want to do, you know, I think us winning the URC was the Stormers' greatest achievement in our history, okay? Yeah. Um, and I, I'm part of a collective on that. I'm not saying it, uh, John Dobson, but the, I agree with you. South Africa a, agrees with you. <laughs> it's a collect. Even people in Pretoria <laughs> and Chauvin agree well, yeah, with you. We have said a low bar. We have, we have been through tough times here, but the greatest, the greater achievement was is to put us at the top table of world rugby, a table for, let's say, four. Leinster, Crusaders, Saracens. We want to sit at that table. Yes. And we're not going to sit at that table with Dion Ferri, Evan Roos, Llewellyn, I, I, just the guys who played the yes. final. Do you know what I mean? Got to have that pool. That, that's exactly right. And so it's going to make, this year it's going to be, we have to go, yeah, Friday's going to be nerve wracking. Yeah. Really, really nerve wracking. It's digging deep. Like yeah. you said, the summer, stay there, yeah. you're building a pool. Yeah. We can have two starting 15s. That's exactly right. And know that they're solid. That's exactly right, Dylan. As a coach, it's tough. Because when you win, everyone loves you. Yeah. When you lose, you take the knocks for your team. Just dealing with that pressure and making sure that you're in a good mental space. What's the... What's the things you do to make sure that you're like dancing in between? You know, <laughs> just if you're switching off, dance. you're switching off. Yeah. yeah. Even if you can't dance. No, you know look, I mean? the, it's a challenge because you're obsessed. They, it's very hard to switch, you know, and it's also hard because we travel so much. So I get how I've got a wife and a daughter and you get back from a trip and you think, gee, that was tiring. You know, we put everything in. My wife said, no, you've been away for three weeks. Yeah. You're going to be Annabelle. up at six. Yeah, you're going to do activities. Yeah, it's, it's, it is tough. But, you know, a little bit of exercise and sleep's the hard thing. Yeah. Like, I promise you, you, when you lose, ask any coach. The pillow's wet from tears, you know. You get to sleep, take the medication, wake yeah. up. And you, it's like being in a pub in Scotland. Just when you start getting a little bit ticking over liquor, when you go outside so cold, you're sober again. Yes. You wake up and you think, okay, Sunday morning, ah, oh, flip, we lost the Lions. Yeah. <laughs> That's tough. How about you? It is, no, it is, it is intense, sir. I love that you laugh about it. <laughs> it. You have to, it keeps you sane. Any yeah. South African, you have to laugh. Um, I, I, I love the fact that you're an author as well. <laughs> right? Is that something you still you still you still dabbling just to um, have some fun off the park? No, yeah. What I try and look, I know, I, I've I've done two. I've got a third book, but I can't come out while I'm Stormers coach. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it, it's just it's going to look bad. And my books are, are are satires. Yes. Of and to satire, you've got to use bad uh, words or phrases and, and I'm just scared and the story yes. somebody's no. going to say I'm, why is Dobbo writing Fifty Shades of Grey? What? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, so well, the writing I definitely want to get back to but now yes. I think what I think is quite a useful and it seems trendy in the world now yes. is storytelling as itself as a way yes. of using the team so getting themes and telling them stories that's where I sort of satisfy my creative yes. bent now but I definitely want to get back to writing as soon as I get fired I'll start writing again <laughs> You know it's going to happen. I'm no, just never, we can discuss never. which year. <laughs> we take the positive. We take the positive. Coach John Dobson, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for chilling. Before I let you go, I never asked you this. Just winning the Vodacom URC for you. What was? What, what is the moment when you went? This is magic. It's clicked. Yeah. We didn't plan to do this, but it clicked. Yeah. Yeah. Because it, it. We call that absurd. We just clawed our way through. Yeah. I remember we had to win there. It's like uh, the movie you're watching, yeah, yeah, every, every week, week something new happening. Yeah, so we had week, week, finish top eight to make playoffs, yes. then finish top seven to be sure of Heineken yeah. Cup, then semi-finals, then playing for now home. Now we're home final. Yeah, Jeez, home it's final. happening, it's drama. I didn't see the end of the game, I was, uh, you know the story, I was in the showers. Yeah. Um, but um, it didn't, not even that night, that night I was grumpy, you know, even after I tried to down a beer or two, <laughs> but it was just too, because I think the stress had just been too yeah. much, and I think chemically, but I th tell you, we went on the, the open top parade with the mayor yes. and to see the and that to be in Tilly Hall, there's the mayor and there's the thing. 
we, got, we went on the open top bus and our first beer was like 7.30 a.m. Brilliant day. That's when you knew, guys. We were good. partying, we're we were good. partying. Eh? I they they were lacking. No, probably then. It took a while to settle in, you know, yeah. the scale of what we'd done, yeah. Love it. Coach, Don't thank you, you I'll give you a hug now. Give me a hug. <laughs> Appreciate you. Thanks for making Cape Town no, smile. No, thanks thanks very much. There we go, it's pretty simple. Just like in the game of rugby, you too can get better at playing the bounce in life with the help of change science. So head over to the change exchange and learn how to play the bounce. Away.